ingredients that you'll need. I actually use my supermarket and I put all of the ingredients that I needed for the Christmas dinner into it and it came up that Asda's was the cheapest place to buy them from that did online delivery because that's what I wanted to use. But I didn't have a good experience with the Asda online service at all and I wouldn't recommend using it. Um, none of the refrigerated items arrived. So if I had actually been cooking this for Christmas day, I wouldn't have had any of the meats, any turkey at all. Um, I ended up having to go into the store to get the ingredients that were missing from my online shopping. I would recommend doing the shopping in store or just avoiding as to do the shopping somewhere else. Aldi and Lidl are also quite comparative. Do is to prepare the base for your trifle. Now Asda's do sell ready-made trifles, they're not going to be as good as this chocolate orange trifle is. And a lot of the ingredients, like the, the eggs and the milk and the cream, we're going to use in different areas of the, the Christmas dinner anyway. Tear off the jelly cubes and put them into half a pint of boiling water. Leave the cubes to start to soften and dissolve while you chop up the Swiss roll. Then place those slices onto the bottom of your glass bowl. Once there are no lumps left in the jelly, you add another half pint of cold water and then you pour that over your Swiss rolls. You want them to soak up the jelly, so pour it onto them, get them nice and wet. And that's the bottom chocolate orange base for your jelly. You just want to pop that into the fridge now. It needs to set overnight, so you really have to do this set the day before. On its own, the sage and onion stuffing mix is only 15p, which is a great price, but it's really not very interesting. You can easily liven it up, and I'm gonna show you how to turn it into a luxury stuffing mix. Finally slice half of your onion, and then take four of the sausages, and you're just gonna peel the skins off them. So take some scissors and make a snip down them, and then the skin should just peel off. And what you want is the sausage meat out of the inside. We're going to make up this stuffing mix according to the directions on the pack, but I'm adding cold water, so it's 225 mils of cold water, and then add that sausage meat, the onions, and an egg. Then give it all a really good mix together, breaking up the sausage meat. So I've put a little bit of oil into the bottom of this glass dish. I'm just gonna spread that around, and this is gonna stop the stuck it the stuffing from sticking while it's in the oven and then transfer your luxury pork stuffing into the dish. Smooth it over with the back of your spoon and then this is ready to go. Tomorrow you'll just need to put it in the oven to cook it. Just like with the stuffing we're going to jazz up the cranberry sauce a little bit. This one is quite nice on its own. But I'm going to show you a little trick just to make it seem a little bit more decadent at the table. So I've sliced the orange in half and I've chopped out the middle section. This is going to be used to decorate the trifle with so we're just going to set that aside for now. This half of the orange we're going to squeeze the juice from and add it to the cranberry sauce. I'm going to decant the cranberry sauce into this little glass bowl so I'm just going to squeeze the juice into there now. And then you'll also notice I've chopped off a piece of the skin from the orange. I've peeled away as much of the pith as I can from that fine edge there. And I've sliced up the little bits of orange skin and I'm going to add that into the cranberry as well. So take a couple of spoonfuls from your jar and add it into the orange juice and mix that together. And then sprinkle those bits of peel on the top. It's going to look really pretty on the table. is to prepare your sausages that are wrapped in bacon. So take the last four of your sausages and you'll need one piece of streaky bacon per sausage and just start at the top of the sausage and wrap the bacon around it. Repeat that for all four sausages and pop them onto a piece of tin foil. Don't worry if you've got some bits where the sausage is still exposed, that's fine. And then cover these over and put them in the fridge for tomorrow. They're ready to go as well. They just need to go straight into the oven. I think it's a good idea to get as much as you possibly can prepped in advance. So I'm going to prepare the vegetables today as well. I've got this pack of four baking potatoes. Now I'm just going to use this one big one for roast potatoes. 
For four people, I think that's enough. It depends how many roasties you want, but these three I'm gonna peel and make into mashed potatoes. If in your family you would prefer more um, roast potatoes than mashed potatoes, you, you could do two of them for roast, two of them for mashed, but you really need at least two to do your mashed potatoes with. I've chopped my potatoes for the mash and covered those with water. They're fine to just leave them in the pan overnight. Just make sure they are completely covered with the water and then we can boil them tomorrow when we get the rest of the roast ready. I'm also gonna get my veg ready. I'm gonna do roast carrots and parsnips and I'm gonna glaze them with honey and mustard. Now I was gonna make the glaze myself buying um, the honey and then you just mix it with a spoonful of oil and a spoonful of whole grain mustard, but that was turning out to be quite expensive. So what I'm actually gonna do is just roast these and then just before they're ready, I'm gonna coat them with this honey and mustard dressing. I chop the carrots and parsnips into quarters. They need to be roughly the same thickness because they're gonna be roasted on the same tray together so they'll be in the, same, the oven for the same amount of time. I'm actually gonna to need to get a second tray to put my parsnips on. I've just put a little bit of oil on the bottom of this tray and now I'm gonna cover them over and they'll be ready to go in the oven tomorrow as well. are going to be served with streaky bacon bits and fried onion. So I'm just going to slice the remaining half an onion and I've got two rashes of bacon here and with my kitchen scissors I'm just going to cut the two rashes into thin strips. It's fine to leave the fat on the bacon, that's going to give it lots of flavour. Now these are all chopped up and ready. Anything that saves me time on Christmas Day is a good thing in my book. I'm using this stalk of sprouts because I do believe you get more sprouts on a stalk. But I don't know if that is actually the case, so I also bought a bag of sprouts and I'm going to count how many sprouts we get. They both cost a pound, so I'll see what the difference is. To get the sprouts off the stalk, just take your knife and cut downwards under the base of the sprout. I've done the count and there were more sprouts on the stalk. There were 44 on the stalk and 34 in the bag. One thing I will say about the ones on the stalk was there were a lot of little bugs in them. So these are gonna need a good wash now. To wash the sprouts, I'm just gonna take off the outside leaves that are a bit loose. And then I'm gonna give them a good wash in some water. I've seen loads of people give the tip of putting a cross in the bottom of your sprouts. Now the reason they tell you to do that is because it takes longer for the base to cook because it's thicker. So if you put a cross in it, it helps it cook more quickly. I don't think it makes that much of a difference. I like my sprouts to be quite firm anyway and it's quite time consuming if you're putting a cross in the bottom of them all and they really don't need that long to cook. A lot of people I think overcook sprouts. Of course, the question is really, do we need 44 sprouts for four people? Probably not. I've decided just to do five sprouts per person. So I've got those already. I've put them into my pan and they're in the water. They're fine in the water there overnight. Just cover them over. Tomorrow when we make the gravy, we're actually gonna use this sprout water. So when we drain the sprouts, we need to remember not to pour away the sprout water because we're gonna use it to make the gravy. So Christmas Day morning, you need to make the custard layer of your trifle. It's a really thick custard and it will set in the fridge in a couple of hours so you can put the cream on later in the day. Your jelly layer should be set now. This is really solid. So this recipe is pretty much Mary Berry's trifle custard, except I'm just using a pint of whole milk in it. So there's no cream in this part. We're gonna put cream on top of the trifle so that's gonna be quite rich enough. And you just have to heat your pint of milk. You want it to be very hot, but just before it boils. So when it starts to lightly bubble, that, that's enough, that's hot enough. You should warm the milk up slowly because if you heat it too fast, it's gonna burn to the bottom of the pan. While the milk's warming, if you get ready in a separate bowl, you need two eggs plus one egg yolk, a splash of vanilla, that was quite a lot actually, <laughs> just a little dribble of that, 50 grams of sugar, and 50 grams of corn flour. Then you just whisk those together. If you wanted to make this into a chocolate custard, at this stage you'd add a tablespoon of 
cocoa powder. Once you've heated your milk, you add that to this mixture and whisk it together. So then you need to add your custard back to a low heat. It will already have started to thicken, but you do need to cook it because the corn flour in it is just going to be chalky if you don't heat it. Don't worry if it goes a bit lumpy, just keep stirring it, it's fine. So you need to keep it on the heat for a couple of minutes. And once it's glossy and smooth, you can pour it back on top of your base. I'm just going to pour the custard in now. Leave this out on the side to cool for a little while before you put it into the fridge. But straight away, you need to cover this surface over with cling film. And the cling film needs to touch the custard, otherwise you'll get a layer of skin on the top, which you don't want. cocktail now it's best to do this on the day of the dinner you could do it in the morning but I think if you do it any earlier than that the lettuce seems to get a bit soggy with the all of the sauce that's sitting on it wine glasses are great for serving a prawn cocktail in and so are just regular water glasses I think I'm going to use these because I've got four matching ones of these so you just want to tear off a few leaves of lettuce it's important to tear it rather than cut because that stops the edge of the lettuce from going brown. Because when you cut it, you cut through the water cell and those split cells, they're the ones that go brown. If you tear it, it tears along the edge of the water cell and then there's nothing to go brown. So I'm gonna put these into the glasses and you can just arrange them however you want, like hanging over the edges. With the prawn cocktails, you could do more of a salad with them, but just remember how big a lunch you're actually having. I think like a nice lettuce leaf folded into your glass with a spoonful of your prawn cocktail in there is enough. If you want to do more salad, then, then that's great. Avocado goes really nice with prawns as well. This prawn cocktail is one of the things we did splash out on. It was one of the most expensive items in the shopping after the turkey. The sauce is mostly sitting on the top of these prawns, so you need to give it a good mix in. This is to be divided evenly between your glasses, so a large spoonful each. And then you can fold the lettuce back in, so it's like a little parcel with prawns in. And when it gets to the table, they have to kind of dig into it to get to the prawn parcel. An hour before you're ready to serve dinner, you want to start getting the trifle ready. So the cream I'm using is this extra thick double cream. You don't need to whisk it, just blob it onto the top of your trifle. You do need to save back one tablespoon of this cream, which you're gonna put in your mashed potatoes. Just spread it out using the back of your spoon. Then in the center of the trifle, pop your orange and decorate around the edge with your milk buttons. You just want to tidy up around that edge with a piece of kitchen roll to get that off the edge of the glass. It just makes it look a bit tidier and then you're ready to go. Turn the heat on under your potatoes. You just want a medium heat for those. So I'm not doing a whole turkey, I'm just doing a breast. That is plenty for four people. This is a really big breast. It's only gonna take about half an hour to cook, which is about the same amount of time that your roast potatoes are gonna do. So you need another proof dish and you need to put a little bit of oil on the bottom of it. Just spread that around across the bottom of the dish. The turkey breast comes in this elasticated sock to hold it all together. You don't really need to leave that on when you're cooking though. If you take the sock off, it spreads out a little bit and it's gonna cook even quicker. So pop that into the middle of your dish and then put your roast potatoes all around it. I just want to show you the size of these potatoes. So because it'll be cooked in half an hour, you don't want to do giant roasties. If you did want bigger roast potatoes, you could put the roast potatoes in first. Sprinkle it with salt and pepper and then pop it in the oven. Your sausages, the stuffing, and your carrots and parsnips are also gonna go into the oven now. Put the sprouts on too. Again, a medium heat for them. And you're also gonna fry your bacon and onions. And you want to fry them until the bacon fat is nice and crispy. So the 
turkey's been in the oven for 20 minutes now. I've just taken the tin foil off it. I've also taken the tin foil off the top of the stuffing. That's looking a little bit wet in there, so it might be that that needs a little bit longer, but we're gonna come back and check on it in another 10 minutes, and I'm gonna spread the sausages out a little bit too. Drain your boiled potatoes and put them back into the pan, and then you're gonna to start to mash them. When you're part way through mashing your potatoes, you're gonna add a spoonful of the really thick cream. This is the spoonful you save back from the top of the trifle. So remember I said we were gonna use the sprout water to make the gravy? I've got a measuring jug under here and my colander is on the top of it. I'm gonna pour the sprouts into there to catch their cooking liquid underneath. Might not have been the best vessels. I did get a little bit of spillage there. So we don't actually need all of this. So I'm gonna empty this out to 280 mils and then I'm gonna add the granules. So these are the drained sprouts and I'm just gonna to add to them the bacon and mushrooms from earlier. Just sprinkle those on the top. Okay, so the turkey's just come out of the oven. I'm gonna chop into that to make sure it's not pink inside, but half an hour should be plenty for that size a piece. I'm also gonna test the roast potatoes. So look for one of the bigger ones and just slide your knife into it and it should slide in nice and easily. So you want the juices to run clear and inside should be nice and moist, but not pink. I would have liked the stuffing to be a little more browned on the top, but you could, you could pop it under the grill, but everything's ready now. So I'm just gonna serve it as it is. And you can see it's this really nice, thick, sausage, meaty stuffing. These are my roast carrots and parsnips. They got ever so slightly caught while I was messing around filming everything else, but, but don't worry about it. If you follow the timings half an hour, they'll be perfect. And I'm just gonna pour on onto the tray some of the dressing. we're all done this is everything you need for your Christmas dinner so we've got roast potatoes luxury stuffing cranberry sauce sprouts with bacon and onions a giant pile of mashed potato your steaming gravy a giant breast now the breast didn't actually give out much fat it's a very lean piece so I didn't end up deglazing the pan what I did was make up a little bit extra gravy then you've got your sausages wrapped in bacon and your carrots and parsnips. 